this official, along with the 12.9 Escape from Tarkov wipe, Scary Boys were added, lurking in the shadows waiting for the perfect moment to bum you in the ass. And no, I'm not talking about Uncle Ron. <laughs> He's still in prison, silly. I'm talking about the cultists. They've finally been added and I'm not kidding you, they are some scary motherfuckers. So this video is going to be covering all that we know about this brand new faction, and after hunting these bastards since the wipe hit, I'm also going to be giving you guys some tips on how to engage them. First, let's talk about the cultists themselves. They are separated into two types of cultists, the warriors and the priests. You'll know the difference mainly in the after action screen, either if you've killed them or you've been killed by them, they'll appear on the post raid screen as the warrior cultists being referred to to as a sick tent, and that's loosely translated into English as a cultist or a sectarian, basically meaning that they've carried out acts in favour of a sect, religious or political, so that's pretty self-explanatory, but the priests, they're known as Zeox in Russian, which basically is a priest that performs sacrifices and does not serve a Christian god, so there's a nice little bit of trivia for you, but that's what they're referred to in the post-raid screen. And they do have different personality sort of traits, the priests are more defensive and the warriors are more aggressive, and that's sort of self-explanatory by their names as well. The cultists can currently be found on woods and shorelines, specifically around the mark circles on their maps. Now in woods there are two mark circles thanks to the expansion, you got the original one which is next to the lumber mill and right next to the checkpoint on the road, located here on the map and the new one is in the sunken village in the north middle of the map. You'll see a very similar village looking to shoreline and it is around that location that the cultists can spawn also. Inside shoreline they are spawning around the church in the sunken village within the shoreline map and there are also rumours that they can spawn in and around the resort area because you've got that pig room that is in the resort east wing. As far as I'm aware they don't spawn anywhere else. I know that there is a marked place on customs and there's a marked place on reserve, but I haven't seen or heard anything of them spawning there yet, so if they do eventually add them or anything, I'll pin a comment below or make a new video for you guys to keep you updated. The most prominent location is obviously wood, so this is the best bet if you do want to go and hunt these guys down, but you're not going to see them guaranteed just by going to the woods mark circles, no no no. They only come out at night, which adds to the immersion of getting bummed frantically I suppose, so in reality you need to enter the raid between 10pm and 6am in order to have a chance for these guys to spawn, and it's only a 28% chance according to my research and experience, so they're not going to spawn every time anyway, and they are quite a bitch to hunt down. If you do end up hunting them down you'll notice that they look rather different to normal scavs. They'll be wearing black robes and can be walking around areas mentioned earlier, or standing, crouching or prone in bushes and tall grass near those locations. These guys aren't the easiest to spot, but getting the jump on them is your complete preference. If you do have the opportunity to see them first then I recommend isolating one at a time and picking them off for a distance. They are not like a scav boss and therefore do not have extremely buffed health. A precise headshot with a lot of rifle calibers will one tap the cultists no problem. Once you do kill one however you will want to reposition because the warriors will disperse like cockroaches and try to ambush you even if you are at a relative distance. If possible stay about 100 meters away from these guys for easy kills because at that range they don't seem to return fire. Experiencing the cultists behaviour first hand I'm able to tell you that they'll often work as a team. Some of them once you've engaged they will start to shoot you and even throw grenades although not very often, while others they'll lie in bushes, wait for you to get closer or in a prime spot for them to run up and knife you. They are very knife heavy and therefore that is their preference in combat. If you've been picking them off long range that shouldn't be a very big problem however that is the least common scenario you'll find yourself in. The more common scenario when you're fighting them is that you've not made the first move and that you're not shooting first and you've been bummed by them, but that's fine, you can get out of that very easily as well. They are not likely to shoot you straight away, they will run around behind you and knife you. Like I said before they're very knife heavy, so they will choose to knife you first before running to cover and then shooting you for the most part. Occasionally they will just shoot you out the blue because they all have suppressed weapons, but they will likely knife you. And that may have you thinking, old blokes running up behind me won't be so hard, I'll hear them before they even get in arms reaching me. Well, 
Yes and no, that's not strictly true. These cultists are very quick and light on their feet. Personally, the only indication I've ever got when being in this situation is not by hearing their footsteps when running up behind me. It's usually the whispers that you get in your ear and the giggling when they're right behind you. Yeah, I know, really fucking creepy. And as a little side note, when they whisper in Russian, they say things along the lines of here he is. So listen out for those distinct cues if you're walking around anywhere near the marked areas. So yeah, the more common scenario is you being bummed by them first, and you've been ambushed, and that means it's wise to run. Run behind cover as quickly as you possibly can. Unlike the majority of the scav bosses that you'll see, you'll not be under a complete barrage of fire. They like to stalk their prey, meaning you have opportunities to dip between cover to cover and get some distance between them. They will give chase though, so bear that in mind, and this is personally where I find it easiest to kill them in this sort of situation. When they're running after you, you'll hear them, either by their voice cues that I mentioned earlier, or by bushes rustling, or even footsteps. At this point, I'd recommend using that audio cue to pinpoint their location and suppress that position. Remember, a precise headshot will kill, so you might have a good chance of killing them while they're running before they even slide, stop and get aim on you. Again, isolating one target is also best, so using cover and peeking towards the sound cues without revealing too much of your body is a good way to go about engaging these enemies. Also, be wary of how far they will actually chase you. They chased my mod Manly all the way from the checkpoint to the outskirts extract on woods. That's quite a distance, and it was a scary fucking time. From fighting this enemy, you'll notice that every single one of them will have a suppressed weapon, and these weapons vary. They can have a Kedda, an ASVAL, SVD, SKS, AKM or an AKMN, AK-105, RPK, PP-19, MPX, all them weapons. And they'll all be silenced, every single one of them. And they'll have good ammo too, high penetrating ammo like 7M31 for the PP-19 and MPX, 545BP for the RPK and AK-105, 762BP for the SKS and AKM, and SMB for the SVD and SPP for the VALs. Very high powered ammo. And armor, especially early wipe like at the moment when not many people are wearing the best of the best, is not going to save you. If there's one positive to add on to the fact that they haven't got massive amounts of health though, to combat the fact that they've got really good weapons with quite good aim and really good ammunition, is the fact that they don't wear helmets. They don't seem to wear helmets, you'll see them with plague masks, nothing, or just an unarmored face covering. And that is good, perfect for them headshots as I said earlier. Body armor, however, that's a different story. They have a variety of body armors like Karund, the Reader M, or a Defender, all the way down to Packer armors, so it is varied with body armor, so make sure you're going for the head. One more thing in addition to this. Remember when I said they have a tendency to enjoy knives in close quarters combat? Well, yeah, they can also spawn with a brand new knife. This is called the Cultist's Knife, and it's a deadly fucking thing. It's a poisoned knife, meaning that if it hits you, it's going to give you a debuff called the Unknown Toxin, and this will deal gradual damage similar to bleeding or dehydration, and will kill you within minutes if you just don't constantly heal or have it treated. Now, this is a difficult situation because in the game it says that it's treated by the Antidote XTG-12, and this antidote is found in scav pockets, backpacks and stuff like that around the map. It's not got a specific spawn location, so your best bet is buying this off the flea market because they are not easy to come across. The only other way that I could say that you'd get around this and actually heal yourself is by going out of raid, extracting successfully and using the off raid healing. If you don't use the off raid healing then this debuff will carry over to future raids even after death. In contrast to that though, some people have said that augmenting works and a few other meds also helps, but from my experience that didn't work for me. If you want to know if you're poisoned, well you'll be taking damage like crazy, but you'll also have a green little poison icon next to your health status in the top left of your screen. It's not just good guns and armor that they've got going for them if you do kill them though. Like the scav bosses, the priest cultists have bigger pockets, 2x1 slots rather than the typical 1x1, one one, and they'll have occasional backpacks too, and these can spawn really good items, flash drives, graphics cards, and even rumors of the red keycard making a rare appearance. So these guys, although hard to kill, will give you a ton of profit from killing them, and a great souvenir in terms of the cultist knife. Don't take it into raid though in replacement of your hatchet or your knife in your melee slot because if you do die with it, it is the only weapon that will not stay in your melee slot after death. So if I were you, I'd sell it or keep it as a trophy boy because you deserve it. The TLDR of this video, well, the cultists are a challenge. 
a big one at that. But a headshot will obviously prove fatal, so getting range on them is key. Flank them when you can and be aware of your surroundings. Remember that they're only out at night, so if you want to make it easier on yourself, get a pair of night vision goggles. They'll help more than you ever really think. Hell, if you're flush for cash, get a thermal, because those sneaky fucks you'll be able to see them hiding away in bushes, no problems. But guys, let me know your experiences, if any, with these cultists down below in the comments. If you do have any addition or you think anything needs changing to these cultists in general, let me know as well. And of course, if you think I've missed something in this video, let me know because we're going to start a discussion down there and have a lovely time. Anyway guys, I thank you all for watching all the way to the end of this video. Your support really does mean a lot to me. It allows me to keep doing what I love to do and get new content out for all of you lot. If you like the video that I just put out, then a like is always appreciated, and if you want to stick around and get updated when I upload, then consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. According to YouTube's analytics, then the majority of people that watch my videos are not subscribed, so if you're someone like that, then why not hit that little button below? It's free and it helps my channel out, so what do you really have to lose, right? And if any of you guys are interested in playing demanding games like Tarkov but are struggling with the performance, why not check out Shadow? Shadow is a cloud gaming subscription service that allows you to access a Windows desktop client with the top of the range hardware located at your nearest data center. Shadow is a service that I still use all the time. Anytime I'm out of the office and need to edit a video or record some footage, Shadow is perfect. They're a company that I really enjoy working with and they're ideal for anyone who travels a lot or just someone that can't afford a super high powered PC. Shadow has got many people covered as long as you've got a relatively decent internet connection. If you wanted to check Shadow out then there's a link below that you can go and do your research and find out more about their services. And if you do decide to subscribe to Shadow, then you can use my code SAMOSH and you'll save yourself some money, which is always worthwhile. I'd like to thank you once again for making it to this point in this video. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.